December the 13th and we just passed through Bozeman, Montana. We're headed to Clark Fork, Idaho. We've got about six hours to go. Tomorrow is our first day of hunting with Leon Brown and we're mountain lion hunting. This is just spectacular country up here. We drove from Arkansas yesterday. It's about a 26 hour drive. We've got Forrest Teeter with me and we are almost to Idaho. We stopped at the Boone and Crockett headquarters in Missoula, Montana to get a fresh impartation of the hunter conservation model designed by the founders of this club in the late 1800s. This club was the spearhead of the most successful wildlife conservation movement in human history. Here's a big Boone and Crockett mountain lion skull. This place is awesome. Hunting large predators only makes sense if you understand the broader picture of wildlife management. Mountain lions aren't endangered, nor are they rare in the West. Because of the influence of modern civilization, including cities, roads, and agriculture, quantity of habitat is the limiting factor. All animal populations are naturally designed to expand, including those of large predators. Increasing predator populations will either put excess stress on ungulate populations or expand their ranges into civilized areas. In order to keep the predator-prey balance, conservation-minded hunters take out a small percentage of large predators like mountain lions each year benefiting both deer and elk and the general mountain lion population. I feel like Luke Skywalker, when he went out, you know, was on that snow planet and went out on that Tom Tom and met the abominable snowman. It's December 14th and we're getting the snowmobiles ready, getting the dogs loaded up. It is cold. It's about. Negative how cold two. is it, Leon? Negative two, according to what's the It's negative two. Like negative two, and we're about to get on these snowmobiles and ride for most of the day so we're gonna put all this cold weather gear to the test the deer are moving down the cats should be moving down into the so bottom. the cats are following the game yeah they're following the game down you know and I mean they're primarily hunting deer um, they do I mean they do get elk and moose and stuff too the bigger ones uh, the bigger cats but they're primarily following the deer the deer with all the snow we've had in the last week or so they should be moving on down towards the bottom so you so. think so we started off way down low and we were seeing quite a bit of game activity. Mm -hmm. Saw some bobcat tracks and stuff. Came over the mountain, didn't see much. So you expect us to start seeing, I mean, this is a good potential for cat tracks right now. Yeah, you know, get down in boot jack hush. <laughs> A historical appreciation of hound hunting is necessary to comprehend the breadth of what we're partaking of when we hunt lions. Humans have used hounds for hunting for 20,000 years. Leon Brown and his family have bred plot hounds since the 1960s and they aren't just a means to an end, but they are the end. The relationship of a houndsman to his hounds is unique and even reflects a powerful component of our humanity. The ability to leverage the strength of domesticated animals to achieve goals unattainable by our natural capabilities is unique to our species and in essence a defining component of our humanity. Shooting a lion over the bane of a treed hound is in the same category as other human-only activities. 
After roughly 20 miles on the snowmobile, we found the first lion track and it appeared to be a mature tom. So we, we found a mountain lion track about a quarter mile up the mountain and we were worried about wolves and we came down and we found maybe the same mountain lion track but another pretty fresh mountain lion track about a quarter mile down the mountain. This is the third track that we've seen in the last probably two miles down low in this valley where all these deer are. There's deer tracks just pounding this road. Leon says they're migrating down from the high country, but we've seen three mountain lion tracks. But it's getting late in the afternoon, so we're trying to decide if we should turn out. What do you want to do, Leon? Yeah, well, what the heck, let's give it a try. See what happens. Sweet, let's do it. Ah. Woo! I think I'm gonna go ahead and put both of them on it. You just feel pretty good about what he's doing? Yeah, he's going. I don't like where he's going, but I was hoping he'd just kind of circle around there. It's just so late in the day and everything, but he's gone now, so there ain't no turning, there ain't no going backwards. So we turned this dog loose one, one o'clock in the afternoon. They cold trailed about 600 yards straight up the mountain, and they're treed. They're out of hearing, but Leon went back on the other side of the valley and he could hear he could hear the dogs treed, so they're treed. We think it's a pretty decent lion, we'll see. I'm gonna carry the traditional bow up there, but also the 44 mag, so we'll see what happens. Let's get to them. All right, so we noticed when we were down there that Boot Jack, when he came through here, we could see him and he got kind of hung up right here and the, the cat track goes into a cave right here and so that's why he was messing around right here. He must have went in that cave looking for it. And then he finally he come out and went over in by those rocks and then took off on up out of here. He, he... After a grueling two hour hike, we made it to the hounds after gaining over a thousand feet of elevation. And we got to them right at dark, putting us in a difficult situation to make a judgment on this cat. This cat was 70 feet up in a tree and there was no traditional bow shot. Reluctantly, I pulled out the 44 Magnum and we tried to assess if I should shoot this it with looks a pistol. Like he's got a pretty nice round head. Um, you know, but he's got half of his body hidden behind that tree. With a little better light, it would be easier. It'd be easier if he was a little closer. Um, yeah. We're trying to decide if this is, if this, is a, this is a shooter, Tom, no doubt but we got a lot of things going against us. We've got, uh, it's getting dark. It's way up in the tree. Oh, hey, look, he moved. He just put both of his feet over the front. Yeah. Boy, he almost squared up to us more, which makes it even, like I say, he almost would like to have a little bit of quartering on, you know? Because when you're, when you're dead straight on, I mean, you gotta hit him so fast. Oh, he's, he's about to move, he's about to move, boy. Hey, Forrest, get it turned around. Do it. He's repositioning. Hey, he's, he's, he's coming down. He's coming down. Yeah, he's coming down. Here it comes. He's coming down. There you go, hey, man, he's in a great position to shoot. Oh, well, up there, he's coming up to me. He's about to jump. Look at him. Oh, are you hey, I can nail that sucker. Hey, hey, we'll stand up and get behind me, get up. Do I shoot that sucker? Watch out, here he comes! Alright, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. Okay. I got him. I don't got him. Well, we just couldn't. I just was not comfortable shooting that cat. 
skirting down that tree like that at dark with Leon under the tree. I had a couple shots at him with his 44, but I just, I just wasn't, I just wasn't gonna do it. Beautiful cat, holy smokes. First afternoon with Leon Brown here in Idaho. I can't remember doing anything harder than getting to this tree. We, we, it took us about two and, probably two and a half hours. We left at two o'clock and it's 4.30, just about. It was crazy getting to this cat. Big, beautiful Tom. And we just watched him jump out of the tree, so. Woo! Aside from running a fresh bobcat track, day two was a bust because of continual snowfall. Day three started out cold, and we had plans to go over the mountain 20 miles back to the area where we treed the lion two days before. However, before we could get there, two miles from the truck, we found a fresh lion track in the road. We just, this is day three. We're hoping to get a cat today because of bad weather coming in. Man, we aren't, we aren't very far from where we started. We found a track. That's a good sign. Yep. Yep. Looks like it's pretty fresh. Definitely last night's track. Well, we were here through here about 24 hours ago. Yeah. So it's definitely made in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Um, woo. Let's do it. Leon likes to hunt with three hounds. One hound he'll turn out first, that will work out the track, and once he gets it moving, he'll put in the other dogs. Do you think like the cat bedded there last night or something? Maybe. Yeah, I think we got ourselves a treat cat. All right. Is it? Are they? They're right on the rim of that. They're right on the rim. It shouldn't be too bad at all getting to them. All right. That's what I like to hear. Good. We've got this cat tree about 87 yards away. I gotta get this hoe strung up, had it in this case, unstrung. Two days, strung up. Lord willing, it doesn't come undone. We ready? I think we're pretty ready. The question is, am I ready? I hope so, because you're the man. I got no choice. I got no choice but to be the man. Somebody's got to rid these mountains of these beasts. Well, I tell you, I'm pretty <laughs> glad to. I'm glad to get this cat. You know, this is this is actually my deer hunting leash right, right. here. Right. He said and, that. And uh, I've got a box blind over here, about a hundred yards out on this power line. Pretty sure I can see the dark spot. Dark spots in the groin area of the cat indicated that it was a tom. Directly underneath the tree, I was fearful that I wasn't going to be able to get a shot with a traditional bow. However, on my 70 degree slope, we walked right up and were able to get almost eye level with the cat. You want me in tight on the cat? No. Okay. Well, yeah, get some tight shots of the cat. Okay, I did. Oh, he's, he's... Okay. 
Okay, Lord. You ready, Leon? Yep. Hold up, hold up, hold up. His shoulder's a little bit back, but I think I can slip it in there. Lord. Yep, we got it. I'm just going to draw. Okay. See what it feels like. Okay. Oh, I nailed it. as a cat, no pun intended. You get one shot at these things, and if you wound them, you can't turn the dogs back out on them because an injured cat can hurt the dogs bad. And man, you get one shot. And it, I had to put it through a hole about that big. And we're not very far from that cat. We're probably six or seven yards, maybe eight yards. But still, with this wooden bow, woo! I think I nailed him, though. I think I nailed him. We trailed this cat on our hands and knees through the snow. It was an easy track, but we're probably 50 yards from the tree. He tumbled down the mountain. You can see him right there. The Idaho Tomcat's down. I hope he's dead. He's dead, boys. Oh, man. Oh. Wow. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Wow. Wow. He's beautiful, man. Nice, Tom. Wow. Wow. Oh, moly. What a beast. I think they are uh, pound for pound, you know, North America's most efficient predator. Right. You know, wolves, they, 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 uh, they hunt in packs, generally, you know, yeah. and I mean, they take down some big animals, but, um, you know, a mountain lion that, that weighs a hundred and some pounds, um, will single-handedly take down, you know, an elk that weighs five to eight hundred pounds without any help and do it very efficiently. This hunt was a lot tougher than I thought it would be. Frigid temperatures, steep mountains, rangy cats, and shooting up with traditional gear with the tetrad of foes that we overcame. If you hunt mountain lions, you'll walk away with a deep appreciation for hounds and houndsmen. And at the end of the day, Boot Jack and the other hounds were the heroes. However, Boot Jack's pride will be in the next generation of hounds built upon what he has become. If you're a hunter, and even if you don't ever want to shoot big game over hounds, don't knock it till you tried it, and you might find something ancient and powerful inside of shooting up. This pups out of June and Boot Jack. So the hound that treed the line today. One day it'll be Mountain.